the Bolex 8mm movie camera. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things to look for to avoid complete disaster. When someone sees this camera, the first thing they think of is 16mm. Number one, <coughs> nowhere on this camera does it say 8mm. Now, it may vary from model to model. There might be something in inside the film compartment. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. So... There were a lot of folks who buy film from the Film Photography Project who bought a Bolex on eBay, and the seller on eBay is even making a representation that this is a 16 millimeter film camera. Here's a quick side-by-side. -side. Here's a 16 millimeter Bolex. Here is the eight millimeter Bolex. Um, the eight millimeter Bolex is only slightly smaller Otherwise, everything is the same. Look, there's no plate on each camera that says what is what. They both... Same. The lenses are different. These are your 8mm D-mount lens. You know, the same D-mount lens that you can use in other 8mm cameras that we've discussed on this channel. So these are the D-mount versions of the 16 millimeter lenses, which are C-mount lenses. They're bigger lenses. D-mount lenses, then it's a 8 millimeter camera. For folks who don't know, they may run film, a 16 millimeter film through the camera, and that will not work because 16 millimeter film has a different perfing system. <laughs> The second thing to discuss with this camera is that this is not a reflex camera, meaning you're not looking through the lens when you're shooting. But the great minds at the Bolex company have designed something that I think is um, very important for shooters to know so you don't wind up with a roll of film that is completely blank. And that is this. On this camera, there is a through the lens eyepiece that is for focusing. And this through the lens eyepiece, making that reflex, goes to this lens right here. Now this lens is not in the position when you're running your camera, you're not shooting through this lens, you're shooting through this lens. How do you know? Here we look. So here is the eyepiece to this lens in this position up here. This is where your lens, can you see in there, John? So, your lens that is in this position is where you shoot. That's very important to know. So this feature of looking through your lens is strictly a convenience for focusing. So if you're on a shoot and you're, you know, you have a tripod and you have a subject matter that you're, you're shooting, it's conceivable that you could put the, your shooting lens in that position, focus, focus your lens, and then move the lens back to the shooting position. Why, God, why? I hate it. This is not a feature that I use. It can be very confusing to a shooter who, who, who've never shot before to think that when looking through this lens and focusing that you're actually shooting out of that lens, you'll wind up with a, a completely blank roll of film. Here is what I shoot with. You're not looking through your lens. It's just a, a visual eyepiece that is to the side of the camera. Uh, make sure your camera comes with it. <laughs> Let's talk about the lenses really fast. We have a wide angle 5.5 millimeter lens terrific. We have a 12.5 millimeter standard lens. That is, you know, the 12.5 millimeter is equal to the normal view lens. If you want to shoot with it, you make sure it's in this position. Then we have a telephoto lens, and this is a 36 millimeter telephoto lens. So I like to shoot wide, so I always shoot with a 5.5 millimeter lens. I keep it in that position. So whatever lens is in the position to shoot, you know, for setting up your shot and composing your shot, I have this set at 6.5 millimeter. It's 5.5 millimeter, close enough, don't sweat it. Then to see a different view, 12.5 ah, millimeter, terrific. 25 millimeter, we don't have that lens, but if we did, okay. Ah, 36 millimeter, telephoto lens. Holy, a 50 millimeter lens, super telephoto. <gasps> Good Lord, if you're shooting sports, this is the dream, right, John? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here is um, your frame rate. On the orange, it's 16 frames per second, which is the normal for regular 8mm film. This camera shoots what's known as double 8 film, a.k.a. regular 8mm film. It's 16 millimeter in width, but it's not 16 millimeter standard film because the perforations are totally different. You can't run 
16 millimeter film through this camera. Here is your um, shutter button to, you know, to engage the camera. As you see it, you can do this as well. Look at that, stays, stays, stays. Tripod mounted. This is your CR crank. <laughs> Counterclockwise, crank your camera. I usually crank it very gently till it gets near the end. You can feel it tightening up. Great. Uh, here's your footage counter, which is great, terrific. Let's look at the film compartment and loading. Wow. Oh, so complicated. I know, I know, I know. Don't, don't, don't be upset. <laughs> All right, now these are my empty reels that I'm just really, I'm really just storing these in my Bolex. It should come with two take-up reels, a 25-foot take-up reel and a 100-foot take-up reel. You have a choice uh, in this camera. There are two sizes of film that you could load in this size Bolex. Here's your typical 25-foot roll of AA film, which when developed will equal 50 feet of film. Well, why? How could that be? Well, it's because you're shooting double eight and double eight film. This is the 25 foot roll. Double eight film, 16 millimeter in width, perforated for eight millimeter. And your camera, you will shoot this roll twice through your camera. The first time you shoot it, you'll get a set of eight millimeter images on one side. And then when you flip your film and shoot the other side, you'll get another set of eight millimeter images. And that is all pulled together in the laboratory and or scanning to create what ultimately is 50 feet of finished film. They, they split it down the middle. That's a good point. Negative film, which produces a film negative, remains 16 millimeter and gets split digitally. Positive film, which is made for scanning or projection, is actually slit in the lab to create 50 feet of film. So let's say you have a big project. Let's say it's, um, I don't know, Thanksgiving dinner and all the relatives are coming over. You may elect to shoot a 100 foot roll of film. 100 feet of double eight will equal 200 feet, feet. of finished film. I'm going to be loading the, the, the baby 25 foot roll of film because loading is exactly the same with the 100 foot roll of film. This is just a test roll so there's not much film on this reel and it's exposed to light so I'm not worried about that. You do need to load in dim light. Film is uh, light sensitive. The film needs to be developed before you could see any images so you need to handle film in very very dim light. You know put it back in its packaging before sending it off for developing and scanning. The dull side of your film is the emulsion side this is the light sensitive side and then the flip side is kind of shiny and darker usually uh, that is just your base side of your film photo sensitive side of your film will always face out towards your lens now the bolex i think is pretty easy to load now the first thing i do as taught by professor tarbox at William Patterson University is to set your frame rate to 12. do you remember that john no <laughs> The great thing about the Bolex is you put your film on the post. In order to auto-load your film, that's A-U-T-O. Hmm. Bolex has this nifty cutter over here. It's the film cutter. You put your film in here, over here. Do you see that? Hmm. And you actually make a slice. You hear that? Crunch. Discard that. Now, it sliced your film so it loads easy. Once again, this is just a test roll, so normally a roll of film would not be all like floppy like that. <laughs> well, here is your um, your loop. Loading, make sure the loops are closed. Look at that. That's, that's the position you're in when you're shooting. That's your sh position you're in when you're loading. You feed your film through this slot here. Do you see that? Mm. Whoa! Holy smokes! Put your film on your take-up spool. Side one. See, it says one. And now I usually just run a few more feet. And now I will open these loops. And now I will switch my frame rate to 16 frames per second. The loops are open, so now, look at that. Now you 
Now that's great, you're ready to shoot. Now you close up your film compartment. You may be, um, you know, really bugging yourself, like, oh man, check the film. Boy, are you bugging me, man! I'm bugging yourself, like, oh man, check the film. Oh, God! Check the film, check it, check, 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 check. God. I'm, I'm getting bugged now, whoa, man! Once you close your film compartment, you do not open it again until you've run, it, run your roll of film through, or else you will, um, basically flash your film, expose it to light, and kind of ruin it. Oh, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. End of side one. Now, as with other 8mm cameras, you take your film off the take-up, flip it, and then you take your, what was the feed side, flip it, and then you just repeat. When you remove your film, uh, you will put it back in its tin or black bag and uh, hopefully send it to the Film Photography Project for developing and scanning. And then I always take my take-up spool, put it back here for next time. And same thing, I store my 100-foot roll in my camera so I just don't lose it. As you said, if you're buying this on eBay, uh, look for one that has both sized spools that come with the camera and hopefully an instruction booklet as well. Okay, very important is exposure. So let's talk about it. So each lens has uh, f-stops that you set your lens to. On this particular lens, which is the wide angle lens, the 5.5 millimeter, the widest is f2, which is pretty good. And it goes all the way down to f22, which is wonderful. Let's take a look at the standard lens. There's always like a point on your lens, like where it is that you line your lens up to. Do you, do you see that point there, John? Mm -hmm. So this is a faster lens, f1.5. Excellent. And goes all the way down to, closes down to F22. Also excellent. See that white post? Mm -hmm. That's how you know what you're set on. The standardization here, like you notice that the six feet is in orange. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because if you're shooting outside and you're at like, I don't know, F16 or F22, if you're at that, just about everything's in focus. So the smaller your aperture, the better focus you have at different focus ranges. Do you remember that from school, John? Mm -hmm, I do. How to set your f-stop? Well, if you're shooting at the prescribed 16 frames per second, that gives you a set, follow along here, folks. If you're at the prescribed 16 frames per second, that gives you a set shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. So I recommend you use a light meter app or a handheld light meter like the Gossam Luna Pro or a Sekonic meter. You put in the ISO of your film, recommended 40 ISO for daylight shooting, and your shutter speed, 1 over 30th, and that will give you your f-stop. After you shoot a few rolls, you'll be shooting like a pro. You'll be shooting like a pro in no time at all. Uh, and that's it. That's the quick overview of the 8mm Bolex. I have yet to shoot a test roll. I'm going to shoot a test roll, and hopefully in a few weeks come back and give you an overview of how it went and any additional tips I may have. If you have any comments, please leave them down below or shoot us an email. I'm Michael at filmphotographyproject.com. Thank you very much. Is there anything with feet in there? Everything. Feet? Feet. <laughs> Whoa. feet. Oh, well, uh, one thing I almost forgot. And I don't know if every 8mm Bolex model has this, but this particular one has a cold shoe on top. Cold shoe. And you may say, well, okay. Well, if you bought a modern day light panel like this, ah! you could put the light panel on this cold shoe. Cold shoe? Holy smokes. Got a little poof in the front. Now you're ready for your indoor shooting to put a little poof. Especially if you want to shoot 100 ISO ectochrome this is the perfect way to do that and i think you'll find that shooting ectochrome 100 iso indoors with all the indoor lights on and this you'll probably be shooting somewhere wide open f2 maybe so i just wanted to let you guys know about that as well the end everything feet, feet. you're kidding me boy are you bugging me man i'm